Hi everybody, I'm Greg Fischel. Welcome to bonus weather video number one for this week. And we're going to be taking a look at what we call severe weather climatology. The Storm Prediction Center out in Norman, Oklahoma keeps an amazing database of all the severe weather occurrences all across the country uh, for many, many years. And so they're actually able to construct maps in terms of what uh, types of severe weather are most likely in different parts of the country at different times of year. So I thought you might find this interesting. And so uh, let's go on ahead and uh, take a look at this here. So first of all, I wanted to talk about the normal high temperatures in January or the 30 year average. And uh, basically uh, you're looking here like we are right uh, around the 50 degree mark. So the yellow is 50s, 60s, 70s, and then we have 40s, 30s, 20s and teens up in here. So uh, we have about a 60 degree spread across the country in January. And then as we head toward April, the contrast starts to decrease. Okay, we're I think basically 80s, 70s, 60s, and 50s. And then by the time we get to July, we simply have uh, around, uh, these are all 90s down in here and then 80s and 70s. So the amount of temperature contrast from north to south across the country decreases and the jet stream is basically driven by temperature contrast. So the less contrast, the less wind there is in the upper atmosphere and vertical wind shear is one of the key ingredients uh, for uh, severe thunderstorms and tornadoes and all of that. So one would certainly expect there to be less uh, at least in terms of tornadoes uh, during the summer months than there would be back uh, in the spring when you still have a fair amount of temperature contrast from north to south. So here are the current probabilities of any type of severe weather, and this could be either tornadoes or damaging straight line winds or hail. And you can see that the core of it is out in the nation's midsection, but uh, it does extend eastward to some degree, and these are pretty small percentages. Uh, if you take a look at the actual uh, color code here, you're taking a look at something like 3%, okay? And that's 3% within 25 miles of a given location. Now, in terms of the max probabilities of any severe weather, believe it or not, around North Carolina, it actually is the last week in June. Now, one of the things here is that the vertical wind shear is definitely on the decrease by that time, but we also are increasing the amount of heat and the amount of low level moisture by that time, both of which are key ingredients for thunderstorm activity. And if it gets really, really hot and humid and unstable, then you can still get damaging winds. The fact that the thunderstorm grows high into the atmosphere and then you start to rain out of that. And if there's any, uh, any shear at all, it doesn't have to be a whole lot, then that falls into dry air it cools it by evaporation, and then that cold air accelerates downward and spreads out at the ground, okay? And we call that a downburst. So you can still get those types of severe weather very easily in the summer months, even if it isn't a terribly favorable scenario for tornadoes. And then these, this is actually breaking it down now. Current probabilities of tornadoes uh, for this week, again, maximized in the nation's midsection. Probabilities much, much less in the eastern part of the United States and the max probability of tornadoes for North Carolina comes on or about the week of April 15th, which has already passed. Now, and then significant tornadoes uh, is, uh, this is the current probability of that, and by significant, this would be EF2 or higher in intensity. And uh, again, the maximum probability of those in North Carolina uh, is the week of April 8th, a week earlier than the probability of all tornadoes, okay? So we've already passed that. That doesn't mean we can't still get it, it just means that the maximum probability has passed. Okay, current probabilities of damaging winds, this is the way it looks right now, and uh, the peak of that uh, is actually the week of July 1st. And so when we took a look at the probability of any type of severe weather extending well into June, then you sort of see here that um, this same idea is coming forth in the first week of July. And again, it's because at that time we have an awful lot of heat and humidity to work with and thunderstorms can still get pretty strong, even if there isn't a lot of vertical wind shear. Okay, current probabilities of significant winds, 75 miles per hour or higher. This is what it looks like this week. And the maximum probability of that is the second week of June. Then we go to the hail probabilities, and this is the current probability of hail, which would be one inch in diameter or higher. 
and the maximum probability of that is a couple of weeks from now in late May. And then significant hail, which is two inches in diameter or higher. Uh, this is the current probability, pretty low across North Carolina, and the peak probability of that, still low, but it does peak out uh, the last week in May. So in terms of tornadoes, the probability maximum is skewed more toward April. And then in terms of damaging winds, uh, it's skewed more toward the summertime, and hail is sort of in the middle. All right, there are the credits. That is the, the bonus weather video for this Monday. Hope you found that interesting. Uh, the next daily weather update tomorrow and the next bonus weather video coming up on Wednesday. Hope to see you for both. In the meantime, have a wonderful Monday evening, and we'll talk to you again tomorrow. See you later, everybody.